I did not know this band until he walked out on stage. Neither did I, by the way. Neither and did I. He walks out on stage and... Just like uh, a vampire. A, a very well-dressed. <laughs> a very yeah. well-dressed man. And then the first song they played was uh, The Death of Peace of Mind. And it blew me away. I'm like, holy... Welcome to another episode from Takedowns to Breakdowns with a and Today we're talking about bands that you've discovered by going to a show. Maybe you'd never heard about them before. You walked into the venue, you heard a riff, and you're like, what the fuck? What Who are I... these guys? They're magnificent. They're, the, they're huge. They're huge. Well, you're not going to say they're huge, but you're like, wow, what the fuck? Like you're having a beer or something in the back and you hear a riff and you're like, Wait a minute! This like sounds you, amazing. Like you came, Get the fuck out of the way. You, you came there for a different. You went there for a different band. But Obviously, you went there for the headliner, and one of the opening bands blew blew you blew, away. Blew you away. I I have one that will always be the one, and that is Machine Head. The year was 1991, perhaps 1992. It's kind of foggy in the memory because it's been a very long time. Definitely. But they were opening for. A small little band called Slayer during the Divine Intervention Tour. I bought the ticket for Slayer and then I see Machine Head and my words were, who the fuck is Machine Head? And why are they opening for Slayer? Couldn't they get a better band? That, that's exactly what I, I, I'll never forget this, right? Because I, I, you know, back in the day in Portugal, it's not like we had access to music and that much. So like a lot of bands were going under the radar, right? So I bought the ticket, Machine Head. I go to the show. As always, I, ne I don't miss any bands. I go in for the first band. I stay until the last song. Exactly. That's always how I roll. I walk in. Machine Head comes on. And I believe the opening track was the Vidian. I was like, who? I was all the way in the back, by the way. I was all the way in the back. I was like, who the fuck are these guys? What the? I was like, get the fuck out of the all the way to the front. By the time I got there, my friend had broken his arm, yeah, stage that was, diving. That was the concert that he broke his arm. That was the arm. concert, he broke his arm, stage diving, but he stayed for the whole thing because he said, there's no way I'm missing Slayer. So I'm staying until the end, and then at the end, you guys can take me to the hospital. But anyways, that's, that's not really relevant to the story itself. The story itself is me going all the way to the pit and, and, and being in the pit during Machine Head, going fucking nuts. And I was like, these, I don't know who these fucking guys are, but the energy that they had, the way they looked, the way they were playing, I was blown away. They caught you. They caught me. I, I was like, I, I just, this is what I needed and I didn't know I needed it until that moment in time. And I remember the next day when I woke up, because the concert was in Lisbon, when I woke up the next day, I was staying at a friend's house, uh, I went to a place called Bimutor. Back in the day, that was one, one of the places that sold like, you bought the tickets for the concerts there, but they also sold music. So I went there. And I bought Burn My Eyes by Machine Head, which was their debut record, which is the record that they were on tour with. That record got, that CD got played so much, so much, the top of the CD has cuts on it. Like it's scratched from you grabbing, taking it out of the case, yeah, putting, it putting it on, it back and forth. The, 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 the little um, sleeve thing, it's all freaking damaged from sliding it in, sliding it out, sliding it in, sliding off from you, reading the lyrics. Uh, that CD got played so much, I couldn't get enough of Machine Head. From that point on, I became a huge Machine Head fan. That moment in time changed everything for me as far as that band is concerned. I went in not knowing who the hell they were, and I left a, a huge, fan. huge fan. Huge fan. Like, I absolutely was blown away. I'm not saying they stole the show because Slayer is fucking Slayer. It's, it's fucking Slayer, yeah. But Machine Head, they may not have stole the show, but they stole my heart. Absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal. The performance was incredible. They, they, they incredible. were able to knock you off your... Uh... Incredible. Dude, it was, it was one of those things that you go in not knowing who the band is and you leave uh, an absolute like diehard fan. I, I, I remember I bought a t-shirt... I bought a Slayer t-shirt. I then, bought a Machine Head t-shirt. The next day I bought the CD. The CD, yeah. They the next day I went and bought the CD. And I couldn't get enough of them. I think for a period of like a month or two, all I would all play, to. that CD, that's all I was playing. Back and back and front. Just fucking loved it. I loved the look. I loved their style. You know, like they're from California, San Francisco, the Bay Area. 
So they had like, you know, big shorts, like baggy clothes. They were jumping off the riser of the drums, like fucking killing it. Just so much energy on stage, like just absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal. It will always be the one band that I went to a show not knowing who the fuck they were and I walked out a huge fan. There's no other band that's ever done that. I've gone to shows where I haven't known one of the opening bands and I'm like, well, you know what? They're kind of cool. Not a band like Machine Head, you know what I mean? Like no other band has ever had that effect on me. And when you look back and you see the career that they have had, that's freaking phenomenal that I had the opportunity to see them that early on in their career opening for Slayer in Europe. So, fucking phenomenal. All yeah. right, that's my uh, story. Okay, uh, I'll start off with a funny story after after this one. I'll do a funny story after this, but this one is uh, an actual one. Um, the year was, well, actually it was last year. Uh, 2021. Okay. And it was uh, it was my first and last show. Okay. That was Ice Nine Kills? Ice Nine Kills. You know Ice Nine Kills. And I know Ice Nine Kills, but I didn't know Bad Omen. Okay, Bad Omens. And okay. I did not know this band until he walked out on stage. Neither did I, by the way. Neither and did I. He walks out on stage and... He's like uh, a vampire. A, a very well-dressed, <laughs> a Fucking very yeah. well-dressed man. And then the first song they played was uh, The Death of Peace of Mind. And it blew me away. I'm like, holy shit. I, I, I was blown away too. I yeah. really like, his voice is amazing. He's able to change from a very beautiful, crisp tone to having some, you know, screaming some, vocals. Yeah, some heaviness in there. Uh, all the musicians on stage were really good. They were able to have that heaviness, but also have class to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and the lights, the show was phenomenal. The, the light show was amazing. I mean, it really did grasp me. The stage me. presence was really good. And too. then after the show, I even bought, you know, some music because I want to listen to them on the way home. I mean... Ever since then, I've been listening to a lot of, uh, of Bad Omens. Uh, on that note, we're going to see them again. On that note, we're going to see them again. Yeah, so I'm even more excited to see them again because now I know what to expect even more. I'm more well-versed in their... Uh, discography. Discography, yeah. Yeah, we're going to see them with Under Oath, Spirit Box. Yeah. Uh, they're, the third, they're the third band on that list. So Under Oath is the headliner, Spirit Box, and then Bad Omens. I'm with you because now I know what to expect from them. So now I'm really hyped to actually see them again. Their live performance it was, was amazing, phenomenal. Yeah. It was phenomenal. I, I I agree with you. What was the funny joke? Oh, the funny joke was uh, the year was either 2018 or 2019. Okay? I can't remember because it was so long ago. Okay. Um, Where are you going with this? So I can't actually fully remember because ever since, you know, the vid started. Uh, You've lost track of time. I've lost track of not only time, but when we go to concerts, I can only remember... Either the, the headliner we've seen, so I can't remember the bands before. Okay, but if you tell me the band, I'll tell you who the headliner was. Okay. We went to see a show, and the band on the card was called The Browning. That was Ginger. Ginger. I, actually, that was the one I was thinking about. Thank you for that. Sumo Psycho was on that bill. Sumo too. Psycho was on that bill. Fuck, Sumo I know that. Sumo Psycho was on that bill. I actually didn't even remember they were on that bill. They were on that bill. Anyways, I see the, the band The Browning, and I'm like, the fuck are The Browning? Sounds like a really weird name, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, but this story also sounds very familiar to your first story. Um, what the fuck are the Browning? We go there, and they get on stage. And instead of you at the back, moving towards the front, getting all hyped, I was at the like front. Like my machine had experience. Exactly, I was at the front, moving to the back, because I was not hyped. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, get the fuck out of the way, but in reverse. In reverse. It's like, <laughs> in reverse. Guys, you guys want to go to the front? Okay, okay. Bye okay, bye. okay. Just send me my spot for Ginger. Exactly. All because right. I was not feeling it. And right. you were not feeling no, it. No, I wasn't either. I wasn't either. I'm it not going to lie. It was not fun. And uh, I was very happy for it to be over. When we left, I did not buy a shirt like you did. And when we got home, I did not buy the CD like you did. Okay, but now fast forward to 2021. But now fast forward to 2021. Uh, December of 2021. They released their latest record? Yes, and uh, you give me the, the record because... Uh, I told you. You told me that you actually really liked it. I'm like, there's no way. Come on. It's the Browning. Like, come on. Their live show was horrible. Exactly. <laughs> what are you talking about? And you're like, you gotta listen to it. I'm like, okay. Now, throughout these years, uh, I've actually gotten more into metal that has more of a, an electronic vibe to it when it's done right. Like EDM? Like... like EDM, but when it's done right. Okay. Okay? And you give it to me on the way to the Ice Nine Kill show. That's how these two kind of... Go together. Go together. So I listened to the entire album three times before we got there, and then another two times on the way back. I was in love with it. I'm still in love with that album it's now. A, it's a magnificent album. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely magnificent. It, it changed my entire perspective of the band. Now the question is, is are they a band that sound different on record versus live? 
I, because I, I would like to see them again, but I would like to see them play more songs of this new record. Oh, definitely. So that I could then compare, like, okay, is, is but this... I feel like I feel like the EDM stuff would be very obviously it would translate really well because it's just EDM stuff. I mean, it's gonna be a playback. It's but, not like... you, but you realize there's some bands that live don't have the same feel, the same sound as they do in studio. Uh, but I'm not saying that that's the case with them. I'm just saying it could be the case. We just don't know. We just don't know because we haven't seen them since. Yeah. Now, what's going to suck, though, is if we do go see them, their new songs will be mixed with a bunch of their shitty old ones. Well, <laughs> shitty... Well, but, maybe now, but maybe now those shitty old ones don't sound as shitty anymore because now you have a new appreciation no, no, for them. No, no, they're still shitty. They're still shitty. Come on, fine. come on. Don't kid yourself. <laughs> Anyways. Well, shitty in my opinion. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay? All right. Because someone must be a tying Browning fan. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. I'm sure there's Die a hard lot. Browning fan. I mean, they had a lot of fans there on that show. There was a lot of Browning yeah, fans. so, like, you know... They're a very popular band anyways. It's not like... It's not like they're unknown. I know, but... They're on tour with Ginger. Exactly, like, but that's why this whole genre change was really surprising to me. Because I was not expect. It was a change. Yeah, this new album sounds like sounds different from previous records. Now, obviously, because of that... Oh, not, there's no two records that sound alike, but there's definitely been a, a growth. There's been a growth, yeah. And uh, when it comes to this kind of core mixed with EDM, it, it's, it actually gets to me. I like it. Like it, it, it's really, it's really, it. The album is really well put together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, everything is is flowing perfectly. The, the vocals are really good. On the it. vocals, the the switch between more of the the electronic vocals and with the, the harsher harsh vocals, vocals, perfect. Yeah, I agree. And I, I I fell in love with this album. So now I feel like that experience will always be with me. That you know I hated them at the show, and even now I, it's not like I look back on it and say, "What are you doing?" No, no, no. I hated them at the show. But you feel validated. That I feel validated. For I'm what had happened back. then was was, it was not, meant to be. I'm not going back. What happened was meant to be. Because You're not retracting those words. Because that's what made me go into this album. Because if I liked them, I would have. I probably would have gone into this album with expectations of that stuff. But since I didn't like them, I think it says a lot that you went into a record and the record completely changed your mind about the band. So that complete, says a lot. That says a lot. But also, I feel like if I did like their old sound, it would be kind of. I, I would be like uh, it, it would hurt my brain a little bit the new album because it wouldn't sound the like same. the stuff I liked. Okay, okay, okay. But since I didn't like it, it was it, it was it was a fresh start. It was a fresh start. It was allowing me to get going to the newer album with with no expectations of of it being you know good. So I had terrible expectations going in, which made it even better for me actually. All right, fair enough. That's a good story. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I like your story. It, it just goes to show you that you always have to keep a, a, an open mind when it comes to music. Just because we, you listen to a band, you listen to one song, you listen to one album, just because you didn't like that, it doesn't mean you're not going to like everything that they've ever done or everything that they ever will do. Every album is its own album. And so, bands change. And bands change. There's a lot of bands that I love their earlier stuff, I don't like their newer stuff, and vice versa. I like their newer stuff, I don't like their older stuff. Whatever, but you know, and just because I'm a fan of the band, also, it doesn't mean I'm gonna like every single thing that they do. So it's a very nice story, yours in terms of the Browning. I really like that. Yeah, I feel like, and and for me, the my machine head is just my Browning, my, my machine head, my Browning relationship. It's uh, it's working out well. It ended off with uh, it's not, it wasn't a, it's me. It, no, it's not, it's not you. It's me. No, no, no. It, it, in, the, in their it, case, it was them. It first. was them. It wasn't me. I okay. was perfectly fine. Okay, fine. But right. now that relationship goes well for for you, the machine head. For me, the bad omen, which we're gonna go see again. again and now the Browning. All right, perfect. I like your stories. Uh, I hope you like mine. I mean, I think I've told I like, you. You told, told you mine before. bits and pieces of that one. Yeah. All right, so now you guys heard our stories. So let us know your stories. What band did you discover by going to a show, and from that point on, you became a huge fan? And what band did you see at a show that you didn't like, but then later on, you fell in love with? Hit us up in the comment section. Let us know. We'll see you guys at the next video. See ya.